Hello everyone and welcome back to a new podcast on the channel. This is episode number four, I believe, and today we've got another special guest. It's 2D or Gino Moore from the Docs Discord. Say hello, my dude. Hello. And uh, basically the aim of today is to, to get to know Mr. Gino Moore for a little bit better. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his projects, a little bit about um, some Docs projects he's worked on or working on currently. Um, and overall, we should, by the end of this, um, know him a little bit better. Anyways, um, let's start off with, uh, where are you from, Gino? Tell us everything about you. Um, I'm from California, so the US. Oh, cool. Is it hot there at the moment? Um, no. It's been windy and cold. Damn. Because it's windy and cold here, because it's like entering winter. And I'm already over it. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been that hard. I think it's like transitioning to summer, right? I think. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty windy. Well, we're happy to take the sunlight back if you don't want it. I don't. I, I like the winter. That's all I like. Yeah, I don't, I don't like waking up in the morning and like you move a little bit in your, in your quilt and cold air gets under and you're just like, well, fuck. Well, my room's always freezing. Like, I just love love my room to be freezing, even though I use like three thousand like covers, and that's it. <laughs> three thousand covers, just a little bit. Though. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit. Like, I can store drinks in my room, and like, they're I can drink them like cold. cold. Dang. See, I put my I put my uh, like because I get bottled water because the tap water here is like literally filled with chlorine and other shit and you can taste it well i can other people that like have drunk it for like years can't really but i i Is stole my legal? oh i think you know laws are obviously different depending on like where you are yeah. but like i can taste the chlorine like it's bad and i i don't know i don't understand know what why. chlorine tastes like but that's sucks Just just tastes like chemical you know like water should be tasteless but if you can actually taste something in the water <laughs> then you know something's wrong yeah i either drink like fridge water or bottled water and that's it and when i do drink water it's just bottled that's the only kind of drink i, I always feel bad because like obviously i contribute to like plastic waste because i drink bottled yeah. water but like second to that i'm like if i don't drink this bottled water i'm not going to drink anything but soft drink and juice yeah and shit same. Like that. that's that's why i get like that's why i ask my mom to get like bottled water because i I'll, i drink everything else yeah no like I, I i can't deal but i store my water like underneath my desk which is right next to my window and i kind of leave it open at night because um i don't know why i leave it open at night because i'm not scared of getting burgled because i live in australia how great's that pretty great I don't. I don't know about my area. I mean, it's noisy. Not really. That's whatever. Yeah, I I live in like the suburbs of my city, so I I and it's like really, I mean, t- take like for instance California, and probably where you live, you think that's busy. Like literally, think about the less noisiest place in the world, and that's kind of like Adelaide. I mean, my where I live, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not that noisy, nor is it like, like bad. Like there's a lot of crime, but it's it's, it's fine. It's fine here. You know, they would steal your PC first, right? Your toaster oven. I I doubt it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's bad. It's like trash level. Oh, uh, they don't know that. It just looks like a PC. Yeah, without like the back on it. Because it mm. sucks at cooling. I need to replace the thermal paste. Ah, okay. Anyways, moving on, talking about PCs, let's move on to uh, the first question I've got for you, Mr. Man, is uh, what got you into programming? Um, well, like probably most people in menu docs, Discord bots, and like the source code, mm-hmm. good old Splice. This was in like May of 2018. See, people don't understand that some of our staff members, even though they don't really talk as much now, like, for instance, 2D is probably one of the most OG staff members, or, yeah. well, members of the Discord. Just like George, like, he, he was one of two 
the staff members. And I've you know, been the like, most problematic, at least. Oh, I mean, you know, you were younger then. You've definitely matured yeah, a sh like a ton. Like if I, I can specifically remember how you used to act when like yeah, two I years ago. Want... <laughs> we won't, we won't touch on that though. <laughs> Let's leave V two history in the dust. Yes. Um. But yeah. So you got into programming through Disco Bots as well. I I. I pretty much did the same um yeah and would you say that you've progressed like a shit ton since then yeah i'm way better than i used to be and i know way more things than i like did back then yeah so that's that's what what like two years three years of yeah actually I've... dedicating progression to you because yeah i've done a lot since like i've learned at least like five new programming languages and I'm proficient in at least like three. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's uh, JavaScript, TypeScript. Your most and Kotlin. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What 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 was it like changing programming languages? Like, did you what what put you like in a position where you wanted to go? Okay, screw this. JavaScript slash TypeScript is great, but let's try and expand my knowledge. So what what brought you to that conclusion? Well. I mean, I I tried learning Java, and as you probably know, it's just it, there's no good resources on it. Even Duncan, like the JDA tutorial guy, yeah, he said you can only learn Java through tutorials, and that's true. There's barely any resources on it, and Kotlin has like top notch docs, and like the syntax is very similar to TypeScript. Yeah, so that's why I learned it, and that's why I got pretty good at it quickly. Okay. Um. Yeah, I remember talking to Duncan like a couple years back, and he was telling me that like books, are, like the best way to yeah. learn Java, and I'm just like, but books are prehistoric. <laughs> like they're yeah, old, he... old news. And then you have to buy them. Like what? That's crazy. Imagine that. Like I already pay for internet. Why should I have to pay for books? For real. Um, but coming coming from that, did you um? Because I know there's a few people in menu docs that um found the Discord bot tutorials, got into programming, and now they want programming as a career. Is that something that you want? Yeah, I like software engineering. That's probably what I want the most. Okay. Is there any specific company you want to work for, or freelance, or...? Probably freelance, because I don't like Google. I mean, they're all right. I use their search engine, but that's it. Like, at least that. <laughs> that that's where it starts and ends, the yeah. search engine. I mean, I, mean, I really... use their, like, mail, but that's it. It's very hard to, to beat Google's search engine because of, like, how in-depth it is in yeah. some bits. Yeah, I tried switching to DuckDuckGo and was like, oh, privacy. But, like, if the suggestions and, like, just, like, content sucks compared yeah. to Google. Um, mm. Yeah, you couldn't switch. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's Google's got, like, billions of dollars behind it, whereas something like DuckDuckGo probably only has, yeah. like, a couple, couple thousand. And it's, it's been around since, like, the beginning of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, it's that time to progress. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, what brought you to menu docs? Because you were talking about the source code, and I'm guessing you watched some of their tutorials. So, moving on from that. Did you join Menu Docs after seeing it, or? Yeah, I think I just saw it and like recommended because that's probably all I watched. Mm. Like just like start the search code, even though I barely watched them because the way I like I tried learning, like I tried learning like through just studying like other people and their code, like going on GitHub and like Stack Overflow and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, I and mean, you that's... know me, I I barely like talk in the development channels. I usually just like learn stuff myself. See, that's like I think that is the best way to learn. Like, I know that people are probably gonna disagree because, like, um, when you speak in a group or like get different perspectives from other people, yeah, uh, then like you can increase your knowledge a lot faster. But I feel like if you are gonna be um, persistent and confident in yourself to be able to learn something and stay engaged in it, then you should just go for it. You know, like I don't, I, I don't want to be dependent on other people 
Whereas like, um, yeah, because like, as you see, like with the V12 tutorials, I am extremely dependent on the reviewers and that's why content hasn't released. So if I, if with, with the V11 versus the V12, the V11 tutorials, I wasn't dependent on anyone. I could just pump out tutorials left, right and center. Whereas like coming back with the V12, I ended up having to um make sure that everything went through the review reviewers and we were using like a system or or uh, we were using javascript that i'd never really looked into so i just baffled i remember when you're like "Ooh, modules i only, I only use modules I remember shield and like <laughs> that was fun shield you know someone yeah. we were talking about shield yesterday well we we're talking about logos and then shield came up and then the guy that I brought on to the S.H.I.E.L.D. project to help me with S.H.I.E.L.D. randomly popped out of nowhere after, like, two years of not speaking. This is fucking weird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I... I think, yeah, I know I know you, you brought someone on. But I think I left the server, like, when, you know, everything went down. Like, you know. You know that yeah. Me, yeah. 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 <laughs> fallout. Uh, <laughs> the fallout. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I feel like I've always favored you a little bit, like, because even when you were yeah. having that little bit of controversy, um, second chances, am I right? I think we're a little bit past second chances, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is about me. I just feel like I have a, a need to be the person that helps someone progress, even in like situations like yours, where you were being a little shit. Yeah, a little bit problematic, at least. I don't know, I just, I don't blame people for their actions as much as I should, and I always see the best in people, and that's going to be my downfall at some point. Probably, yeah, I was a little bit, like, too bit entitled, I guess, Um, when, that, when everything went down, but yeah. It is what it is, in the past, we love that. Yeah. Um, so since then, obviously you've, you came to Mangy Docs. Uh, I think you were, were you a staff member before you got the boot? I think you were. Um, I got demoted because of the whole like rogue situation. Yeah. And like, yeah, you know, and then I just got a series of like mutes and warns and stuff. And then yeah. I think I just left. Yep. Yeah. And then I came back a few months later. Okay, so An event, go, going yeah. from that, you were a staff member, then you weren't, and now you are a staff member again. Yes. Um, so you've done the whole, you've done the rounds, you've done the circles. What yeah. What do you uh, think, in your own words, and be honest here, what it's, what is it like to be a part of Menu Docs? Um, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that. Like, do you mean like, like, what do you mean by that? Um. <laughs> You how my sister, I'm a bit tired. How how do you feel when someone says, "Ah, oh, 2D is a part of Menu Docs"? What do you think of? Do you think of, "Ah, oh, shit, yeah, you're right, I'm a part of Menu Docs." Like, so, yeah, I am, and you know, I appreciated being a part of it. I mean, I don't make anything of it to be honest. I'm just there to like help out and be a moderator. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm like, yeah, I'm a part of it. Like, I just help out. I like exist. something like yeah, I get like an if I get into an argument like oh, aren't you a staff in many dogs? I'm like yeah, what does that have to do do with anything? I don't really make anything big of it. Yeah. Even though you were like oh you wear your uh, position as a badge of honor or something. You said that like way back then. Did I? Yeah, you said like I you said like I wear my like moderator position as like a badge of honor, like I value it or something, even though I don't. Oh, well, I, I yeah. have some small expectation that people choose their words wisely when it's people to do with the community, but, like, outside of yeah, it, I you do. Can't, it's, just, it's just like, it's just like you work at, say, like, fucking Starbucks or something, and then Starbucks is like, no, you're, you're getting fired because you said something to your friends or whatever. It's like, yeah, really? I'm, <laughs> I've definitely dialed down on that because I am involved in a lot of things now. No, yeah. I was before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there's a few things that I take very seriously, like discrimination and, like, racism and yeah. stuff like that. And that will literally just get you the boot. 
but like there's there's some few things like i don't know like dark humor and stuff like i, I don't really care about like if you're gonna joke around with your friends who am i to stop you you know like why why should i kill your fun yeah i yeah i'm a bit I, I always joke about stuff and i never really take things serious like i i did before yeah i you can definitely see that now mm. um but yeah i think we covered the fact that uh like what what programming languages you you know um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna link your website in the description of the video mainly because like oh, nice it looks dope um how much it, it, how many gray hairs did you get from making that to be honest i don't even know that was a it was it's pretty old now like it's been a while since i was 15 like only like two like a week ago but like <laughs> It's been I mean, it's been about a week since I was fifteen. I didn't really I didn't deal with CSS. Yeah. Because I use Tailwind, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Everyone should use it. But I don't I don't remember. I I, I as you know I'm making the new one, and yep. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm <laughs> I'm aging by the second when I'm doing that. Are you using Tailwind again or? Yeah, because I don't like CSS. Anyone that says they like CSS no deserves to go into a psych ward. Um, They're either like lying, like trying to protect their job or something, because yep. it's there's no reason to like it. There's literally no reason to like it. I mean, as I was saying, um, I don't know if it was to you or maybe Anthony. Like, you could just forget one closing bracket on like a HTML tag, and like a whole website just it's yeah. Gone. You said that to me, and I just I hate that about it. I think that we need to. Uh, I don't know, like evolve, like front end web development needs to needs to evolve because it's just garbage. Like we're in a new day yeah. and age. Use something like, um, like Pug or something, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's like Pug or like, yeah. There's a templating engine for HTML and like web development. Oh, okay. I suppose I shall look into that because we are going to be working on a new Magnadocs website in the hopefully coming days uh it's gonna be very simple yeah um moving on um i know we we're talking about projects and stuff like that discord bots uh how many discord bots do you reckon you've made um i mean let me just look at my applications page because there's a lot because <laughs> like, i know about the whole defy media um stuff oh, oh no <laughs> there's stuff before that um yeah there's my first bot was a name like honor or something and yep. there's still remnants of it on like npm mm -hmm. like if you could look up honor like honor npm you, you'd find stuff from like 2018 like very early i still have the source code actually well like i have stuff from 2018 like may dang well so would you, would you say like looking at like looking back from now with all the knowledge you have now how garbage you, is your code to be honest it's just like tutorial code and like it's that pretty it, garbage then <laughs> yeah it's just like functions like module that exports like you it's, it's what you are now but oh, three thanks. years ago <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> get a load of this guy uh um, mr i don't like classes what no, I do. You said you you said no, that no, no, you no. you said that. <laughs> yeah, but that's like a generic. I don't want to learn this because it looks difficult thing. Like that's a yeah. generic. I don't like this because it looks difficult. But I'm not gonna tell you it looks difficult. Yeah, I I actually prefer classes now. I think um the way yeah, they're structured the in the like pounding into me for it. Yep, I know. Yeah. Um. So what's your, what's your biggest current project? What what would you say your biggest project is at the moment? Like this, like Discord bot, or like just oh, project project, including everything that you're working on right now. Um, probably Neocord, which we probably gonna talk about. Oh, I mean, we can just use that as a a straight way into it. Um, Neocord, explain that to me. What is it? Well, it's a distributed uh, Discord library, so it's split into different packages. So, like, you know, there's an API, and then there's the gateway. 
Yep. It's basically split into three packages or four that manage each like different like component. Like there's the REST library, which is for communicating with the API of Discord. And then there's the gateway, which handles all the web sockets and like sharding and like session and stuff. Yep. And then there's the main library, which pieces all those things together. And that basically makes something like Eris or DJS, for example. Okay. Um, and do you think that you will be a major competitor to them when when it goes live? Because I know it hasn't hit V1 yet. And how far off is that? Um, it, It'll probably be against, like, DJS because it's, it's in the same scope. Like, it's... It, it, it'll cover most of the API and it'll give you like like classes for everything like DJS does yeah but the main goal is to have like very good caching control like Eris does okay. so it like fuses the two but makes it just easy yeah because I, I know and I've always said said so that discord.js is a, a very entry level library to the discord API it's very user friendly um, but it doesn't handle things in the best way, mainly because it's appealing to the fact that um, a lot of people that use it are very basic knowledge to people. Um, so a lot yeah. of people move on from Discord.js uh, once they kind of get to know JavaScript a little bit better or they move on to TypeScript. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're saying that Neocord will be most likely a direct co con um, English uh competitor to discord.js mainly because of how it works like it's not going to be in the it's, same kind yeah. of scope as iris it'll be very customizable that's the plan like everything everything you see made by me like my bots i like everything to be customizable yeah have everything be easy and like intuitive yeah yeah so one of the things in like the gateway library so you can like change the compression handlers Explain that to me. I complete dumbass. Um. So you know you have like Zlib and like uh different packages like the native one, which is called Zlib. Yeah. There's like Zlib Sync. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you didn't want to use those and you didn't want to use Zlib, pretty sure there's something called ZSTD. Yep. Which is like a Linux thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But if you wanted to implement that, for example, you can just add a compression handler or decompression handler, which does all that logic without having to, like, actually fork the project and then change, like, that piece, that code that handles, like, payload handling, which is from, like, the WebSocket. Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of take-in. Yeah. <laughs> for someone like you. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't. I don't really. I'm not very in depth knowledge about JavaScript, as you know. Um, yeah. So what what's the release date looking like with Neocord? I've been working on it like recently, mm -hmm. and I'm getting like the gateway library and REST library set up. It'll it'll probably be in like 2021 this year. I don't know about probably later, maybe like September, August, or maybe sooner. Okay. Um. Because I I know I know for one I'm excited for it because it's something new. Um, it's something that will most likely change the Discord bot tutorial scene a little bit. Um, because I I see big things for it. I will most likely yeah. make a tutorial on it. Um, the very basic, probably like mini series, like ten episodes, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, the only big thing I have with it right now is the caching, because caching plays a big role in literally everything about a Discord bot, because yep. it's the, like memory usage, scaling, and everything. And I've like over engineered like the current library, like the alpha library, and like the current in development one. I just have to stick with something and make it simple, like Eris. Which I've gotten a lot of feedback on, and that's the only thing I really have to focus on is how I'm gonna like cache stuff. Would you say that it's very hackable? I know Anthony's probably gonna watch this, and he likes he likes it when stuff's hackable. Um, yeah, I had someone in Lava Client that Discord server tell me that just make it easy to like mute like mutate stuff, 
which yeah. is what Eris does. Mm-hmm. It just gives you the like the map, the, the Node.js map, and yeah. you can do whatever you want with that. Okay, man, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, w- would you reckon that um, are you, are you gonna make guides or um, documentation that any average um base level user can pick up and go, okay, I can kind of use this. Is that is that where we're at it's yeah. going to be like a beginner entry kind of level if you're going to compete with discord.js you need to appeal to that kind of audience yeah at that point if i did want to like compete like compete compete i'd have to make docs or else mm-hmm. like there's no point in using it if you can't understand like the basics of it yeah yeah obviously um yeah i, f- I think we've probably covered everything about it um, you mentioned Lava Client, which is another topic I wanted to talk about because that is a di- uh, direct con- um, competitor English. to, yes, words, mouth, English, brain. Um, it's a direct competitor to Arella. Um, yes. And I, I mean direct competitor as in it serves somewhat of the same purpose. Um, well, I'm sure your feelings and knowledge... Um, say something else in regards to what you actually think about Arella. I want you to be honest about it because um, I don't want you to have to kind of like uh, mute yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, let, let's start with Lava Client and then we'll get into uh, Lava Client versus Arella. So Lava right. Client, what is it? So it, like Aurelia, it's a, uh, it's a, library to communicate with lava link and like handle the very basics of what you need like for a functioning client compare it to like other packages where it does a lot of stuff for you this is more mm-hmm. this is for more fl- like oh my god english this is for flexibility and like scalability it's very simple and it just gives you the basics and like yeah that's it and what was your reasoning behind creating Lava Client? Was there any specific reason or? Well, a lot of the clients that were out around that time were like uh, Discord.js dash Lava Link, which is mainly DJS. And there's like Eris Link or something for Eris. Mm-hmm. There's like no other like, uh, like generic Lava Link library that works with any like uh, Discord library. Yeah. And that was a market to be filled, I guess. Yeah, see, that that's um when I was getting into uh, potentially making music tutorials because it was, like, one of the number one requested things. Um, I started trying to use some of the um, Lavalink clients that were out there on the No Package Manager. Um, and they were just shit. <laughs> like, if I'm being Yeah, honest, they really were. Uh, they, they weren't the greatest. Um, the implementation of certain features was just poor. Um, I think it was more so that it, the package got out and it somewhat worked um, versus... Yeah, like Jax versus... or whatever. Yeah. yeah. The, the the library sucks. Like, all respect to the developer, but it really sucks. Like, Lava Card now, it's a dead. It's a dead project, and it still gets, like, a 1,000 downloads a week or something. Mm. Well, at the moment, I think there's about maybe 10, 15 different JavaScript Lava Link clients now. Like, I was yeah, looking at the... Yeah, all of them are trash, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, there's, I think there's three in particular that are designed directly for Discord.js, um, but the rest, yeah. the rest are supposedly designed to be implemented in any Node.js environment that you want to implement implement it into. But I don't know. I haven't looked into any. But when when we were, when we're talking about um, Arella getting created and Lava Client being created, because they're around the same time, I would say that they were created. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was like as you said, discord.js dash lava link, and that was garbage. And then there was, like, a yeah. lava queue that implemented a queue. Well, there was lava link, which is made by Appalachian, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's a very great developer. I think he's a, has a CS ma- he's a CS major. And, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really good library. It's a generic. Yeah. Like lava, lava client and Aurelia now. Yeah. Um... Is there any plans for Love Link in the future, or are you just gonna kind of leave Lava it? Lava Client. Uh, Don't I, I not say Lava Client. You said Lava Link. You said Lava Link. Ah, I mean Lava Client. Is there any plans um for Lava Client? 
like any there is a v4 planned but yep. as of now v3 is very stable i'm like really yeah. but um it's very stable and I, there's only a few things that have to be changed like resuming and that's about it okay um and the v4 com- is planned and with v4 is there any uh new features coming as in like coverage of the uh lava link itself or yeah there's a very big like filters are just really bad like poorly implemented and i have to rewrite like the types library that like has typescript definitions for lava mm-hmm. link and that's api didn't you make a uh a lava link um fork and then you yeah just with added filters. filters yeah okay and does that other features well? yeah a lot of people use it i have like my personal discord server has grown a lot since i like released my fork okay um and would you say that's probably better than the fork uh not the fork better than the uh the filters they're implementing or is it very similar um it's very close to andesite my my, like my filter implement implementation it's very close to andesite and a lot of the features that are implemented now that are that aren't in official level link are close to andesite like just more configuration and stuff and did you make it more resource um, efficient or just kind of filters in implemented right in there? Well, you can't really do much because it uses like Spring and it's it, half of it is still in Java and not yep. Colin. Okay. Which doesn't really matter, but that's about it. Okay. Um, but saying that, you are... Is that what Obsidian is? Your filters? Or is Obsidian um, something different? That's a com- that's just completely different. Okay. Like it like and like how Andesite is to Lava Link, for example. It's a dumb thing. It uses completely different libraries and like like yeah. a language, I guess. Okay. Um and what is Obsidian then? So that it, it's similar in regards to what it what it uses, Lava Link like, does. Lava player. Yeah, it uses Lava Player. Okay. And it's basically just like it's like externalizing you're like audio providing like if you have a music bot like yep. if you have like ytdl that just like puts it on a separate process like maybe a different machine or something okay and that's how you can play audio so what made you want to create it, it did obsidian come before or after this uh this lava link fork that you made it came after like a few months i guess and what like, was your it's reasoning? only a few months old yeah what was your reasoning behind making obsidian um it was mostly for experience because there's a library called ktor which is like a kotlin like http library and networking library yeah and i just used and i just made it for experience and that i wanted like my own audio know that i could like like use and like don't don't i don't have to worry about like other like the main developer like of lava link yep. or andesite okay which just absolutely sucks Nathan, like good developer but he doesn't maintain it at all i feel like that's like very similar with a lot a lot of like um i don't know like stuff that's used when it comes to discord bot development like it gets released and it kind of gets neglected um Eris. which is unfortunate <laughs> yeah because... like continue um i can't remember what i was gonna say what were you gonna say um I was just gonna say that Eris has been like neglected at, I guess. Like I mean the dev branch has been like pretty good like lately, but not many like um there's like at least like forty issues that haven't been like like resolved, I guess. I mean that's you can kinda of say that for like Discord.js as well, because like V twelve literally came out of nowhere. Like that's well that's what I feel it's like. Severe it's it's significantly larger in community and like code code base. Yeah. Because um, there's definitely more issues to be found. Because obvi- obviously the master branch for it, it it existed, but like when when it came to V12 actually finally getting released, like it, the master branch had not as many similarities as it should have had with V12. Like there was a lot of stuff that got implemented, uh, like managers for instance, that wasn't necessarily in uh the master branch. Well, what what was yeah. going to be the V12 branch, and that that's what kind of like blindsided everyone. It was like we went, we went, we had uh, V12, uh, V11 for like what three years, maybe two years. I, I never used years. V11 since like my 
early beginning days. I used Master a lot, like before it was release released. Yeah, because um, V eleven was around for I I want to say about three years or two years, and then this V twelve just whooped out of nowhere. Because we we thought V twelve wasn't coming until like say this year, um, and now they're already working on V thirteen, which is just yeah eleven just... like like version of eleven of DJS was four years ago. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Time flies when you're not having fun. Um. So moving on, so we we've spoken about Obsidian, which is your um lava player thingy, a bobby, lava no, link yeah. type thing. Um, lava client, which is your lava link client. Um, talk, spoken about Neocord, which is your Discord. You didn't talk about uh, versus Aurelia. Um. Oh yeah, we didn't. Um, what's your opinions on it? What's your opinion on Aurelia overall? Um, now, I think like before when I was developing Lava Client, I had I, for some reason I had a like a weird grudge against Solaris, and like I guess that's been resolved, like now that I've like talked to him a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah, I just had a weird grudge against them, and like, like I just thought they were a bad developer, I guess, and then I just made like a uh, Lava Client just like because it everything else was bad. Including Aurelia at that point, which still is to be honest. But well, um, I know V1 I mean, now was yeah. straight garbage. Like, um, I see that now, and Solar sees that now. So does Anish. I think everyone that was involved in any form of development talk now knows that V V1 was not necessarily best implementation of what it could have been. I don't um, even remember V1. But V1. I know that people don't understand this, but when it comes to Arella, Arella was made mostly because of the tutorials. Like, it was made specifically for the tutorials. The V1 was extremely rushed. Um, and it's like jumping into, like, a new technology and not knowing what you're doing with it and just kind of winging it. And that's kind of what V1 was. Like, it worked, so it worked. And that was used because it worked. Whereas, like, V2 kind of had like some thought process behind it and like there was a lot of things that was res resolved and a lot of things that got implemented that were like beyond better than what was implemented in v1 and it just comes back to the saying of like you live and you learn um but moving on i think v3 is probably going to be better because we we've got you who has made lava yeah. client um we've got solaris who has obviously made v2 and we've got anish who helped with v2 but I also think um, when it when it came to the, the coverage or not coverage the the making of V two, uh, Creventa <laughs> was yeah, like um, literally like a bombastic tart about certain things. I'm pretty sure he stole my idea for plugins because he he contributed to Lava Client, and I was making plugins. Like I taught him about making plugins for Lava Client. Yeah, and then maybe like a few days after I told him that. Ooh, Aurelia, make a plugin system. There was an issue created by Creventor. Like, what? So, you know, like, he's a snake. He's just a snake. Well, he really is. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of Plexi people, like a lot of Plexi management over the last couple, uh, I want to say the last year or so. And, like, I found out a little bit more about him and, like, what how he is and, like, what he's about. And, like, I can say for sure that he's a, he's a little bit of a snaky snake. Um, yeah, he really is. And he's not as knowledgeable as, like, he puts off, which is kind of funny to me. Like, NDP is awesome, right? <laughs> I mean, Remember now? Yeah. I, I always forget that exists, and then someone's going to bring it up, and it's like, why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? <laughs> um, it's literally just Nmap, but, like, bad. I mean, it's slightly better I in some it, ways. I thought it was, like, KV, but, like... It worse. is KV. Yeah, it's like it a bad implementation of Kiwi. I mean, there's a Kiwi library named Kiwi on NPM, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it does the exact same thing, but it's just maintained a little bit better. Better. Well, that when when I asked him what gave him the idea for ENDB, that that came up, like key value, whatever it was. Um, I would use description. Oh, that's when Google comes out. We shall Google this. ENDB. 
Oh, there's a JSON version of it now. That's horrible. Yeah. All right, ENDB is a key value storage uh, for multiple databases. That's his description of it. KV um, is only good for, like, caching, and that's it, like, Redis. That is, that's pretty much the only purpose. But you'd use Redis over KV anyways, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, of course, because it's better and it's fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think with you, Solaris, Anish, um me kind of going hey we should do this i think v3 especially with all the issues and suggestions and everything that's come about i think we'll be able to make arella v3 probably like tons better than what v2 is and as you said i think you said that you were going to help a little bit more if it was to cover the entirety of like lava link yeah because um what i do have a lot of ideas and like i have ideas for like making it robust and like very great like um i, I, I just think, yeah very robust i think knowing you like you're gonna get frustrated with something that someone does or says and <laughs> you're gonna go um, in circles yeah. um but yeah i moving on i think we should talk about mixtape as you were fighting with it before this podcast oh yeah um <laughs> what happened jvm there? things well, there's a new, well, I guess it's not very new, but it's called, I think it's like, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Growl, like G G R A A L V M. It's like, it can run like, it's a virtual machine, but it can run like different languages like Java, yep. Python, and JavaScript. Okay. But there's something called Native Image, which allows you to build your Java project as a, like a executable. Yeah. So like for Linux, you do like dot slash and then the executable name uh -huh. instead of doing like Java dash jar and then the jar file. Okay. And I was like just tinkering around with that, but I was having like libc issues, which is like the C and like uh, the interpreter or something. I don't know. It's, I don't. I don't know C that, that much. You gonna plan on learning some form of C language that isn't Java? Well. I learned C like a tiny bit, and like I learned a little bit of like C plus plus. I don't really like C plus plus, but I did a little bit of C sharp too. But I don't really like any of them. C sharp's okay, I guess. So yeah, I was gonna learn C sharp for um, game development because that was something that I wanted to move into uh, for Unity because they use C sharp for Unity. I mean, there yeah. is like like ways of using like JavaScript and stuff, but apparently C sharp's the best way to use unity um i mean if i was if i were going to, to do game development i would one not do it because i don't know math very well that, that much anymore but i would use like rust or something because rust is amazing compared to like right. using just c um but yeah circling back around uh mixtape <laughs> what is mixtape well it's a music bot very very original but yeah, it's it's a music bot written in Kotlin because I love Kotlin and it's the best language to be ever made. But yeah, it's just a music bot and there's quite a like a few features that are nice, like filters and like yeah, just filters are the only like really unique feature, I guess. And but, mix mixtape uses Obsidian or uses your Lava Link. Filters? It uses well because it's in like. Lava, uh, it's in Kotlin. It uses Lava Player instead of like Lava Link. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. It? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's easier. And Lava Player has filters in it already, or? No. Um, I use something called Lava DSP, which is made by the developer of Andesite, Nathan or Nathan. Okay. No. But yeah, it's basically just a set of like, uh, classes. So Lava Player has something called like um like a like like yeah it's just called filters. There's a filter chain and filter builder, which allows you to change uh, chain different filters together. So you yeah. can have like time scale, which is a Lava DSP thing, and that like changes like the pitch. Then you can have like equalizer, which like is bass boost or something. Yep. And you can chain those two together, and like they'll just come come out as the same like stream. Because with with the current Lava Link, um, you can already 
base boost, I think, from just using the... Yeah, it's from, like, equalizer. Yeah, but you can't do stuff like Nightcore because, like, it, it requires to modify the actual, like, um, output. Like, yeah, that... Yeah, like time the scale. branch. Yeah, that's from Loud ESP. Yeah, so you, you can do, like, the Nightcore stuff with, with that package you're talking about. Yeah, I tried, like, implementing, like, Reverb, mm -hmm. but I don't know math, and... I try like looking up like tutorials on like, like uh, like like bit depth and like uh just bit stuff like like yeah, but like what bit like eight oh my god English, like what eight bit means like sixteen bit, and yeah. what all that means, but lava player is weird, and it like chunks stuff into like nine hundred sixty bytes or something. It's weird. I couldn't figure it out. Oh, why don't you just? I like, tried looking at lava ask, ask the lava people, lava player people. I mean, I would, but effort. I don't know. It's black. It's love players just black magic. Oh yeah. I don't know how it works at it's all. Alien. If you look at like the like the YouTube source manager, it's crazy. I don't know how it works. Mm. Um, how old is mixtape? Like May of twenty nineteen. Like okay. Close to April. So mixtape came right after Defy music then. Um, no, I, I think it was like really early 2019 when that was around. Wait, so they, they coexisted yeah. or? No. Okay. Um, Not at all. So, wait, what, what's, wait, what, English. Comparing Defy Music and Mixtape together, um, what would you say the major differences were? Like back then, yeah. um, experience because Defy Music was just a mess. Like it, you, it used YTDL. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot it was, that. It was super bad, and it used, uh, it used Card Client, which you probably know of. Board client. Dead Library, yeah. yeah. And it used like, yeah, it, it was very bad. Like, yeah. Um, and my logo, my actually my coming, designing. Coming back to that, now that you've mentioned Chord Client, because it it was a client for Discord.js, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the bar framework like Acaria or Classa. Yeah, coming back to that, didn't you say there was a a a, a framework that you were making for NeoCord? Yeah, I think it's called like Enjo or something. It's I I forget what language it means. Like it is. And... Oh, like the name. Yeah, it's translated from something. Probably like Japanese. Um, probably. But okay, so coming coming to this this framework, um, you started making it before the the f finale, like the before V one gets released for New Chord. Is there any reason behind that? Well, yeah, coming back to the name, it means assistance in Japanese. So, but yeah, um, it was planned after V1, and it's going to be planned after V1, because V1 has no, like, actual, like, structure to it right now. Yeah. Because it's not being worked on. Okay. A lot of stuff is planned. Like, it's a full framework, and compared to, like, like Commando, which sucks. But that's just, that's just a command framework. This is a bot framework. A bot yeah. framework. So it's, like, stuff like listeners and commands and, like, inhibitors. And, like... Possibly even like audio stuff, like Lava Link. Okay. Um. Kind of stumped now. Is there any other projects you've done? Like, cause that that's the four main projects I'd say. Oh, th uh, five, because we're talking about the Lava Link with filters. Is there any projects that you're you're currently working on that are, um, not those? Um, the only other projects I'm working on is like Mandrock. Oh yeah. Well, let's talk about Mandrock, the tiniest amount. Is a uh, you know update video coming soon. Mandrock, um, uh, what's your experience been like with developing it? Without starting drama, I mean, it's it's been fairly well. Like gone, oh, I can't English. I'm tired. Um, it's gone pretty good, other than like like pauses and development because of just like stuff. 
But, yeah, there's been a few I mean, like computer issues here and there, and like internet issues for, for yourself. Yeah, and didn't have to reinstall my entire operating system. But other than that, it's mostly just been you issues, Connor. Me but, issues. Yeah. Me you know, issues. Like planning. Have. Planning. Oh, I I would say I've had a pretty good structure from day one for you guys. It's just not so much. Where are the, the badges then? Where are the badges? Where are they even implemented, like code wise? Um, not if we don't know anything about them. I've explained what badges were. You never gave us anything like emojis. You never gave us like names or like how you no, wanted them I, to work. I, yes, I did. I I explained how badges would be implemented in the way of like how you would receive them and where they would be displayed. I just told you that I would get badges done very soon, as in... Probably, like, recently. I probably forgot, though. Like, like very early, you didn't. Uh, well, that was the same with everything, because I was concentrating more on, like, the two main uh, bodied features, which was economy and um, moderation. And I wanted those two to be done before anything else. Yeah, those are, those are done, to be honest. Just um, the economy is left. Yeah, no, badges, the way they're supposed to be implemented is they'll be displayed on a profile card of a user, um, and each badge will have a specific meaning. For instance, um, there's a badge for, like, uh, beta testers, like, people that applied for beta testing, they will get a beta tester badge displayed on their profile, and it will be a, uh, like, something that you are given by, like, an admin, not, like, something that you can obtain through, uh, like, an economy system or something like that. It's like a, it's a manually given badge for people. I hope I haven't been using my wrong mic this whole time. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. Can you hear this? Yeah. Okay, that's great. <laughs> you just poke your mic? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like... I have I mean... a headset mic and my mic mic, like boom arm. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but yeah, I think Mandrock, at its current stage, should should be able to be released, shouldn't it? Yeah, the only thing that has to be done is, like, the shop command, and that's it. Um, that's because you wanted to reformat it, though. Like, implement yeah, it and I... Well, yeah, that has to do with, like, the inventory, and, like, how I want that to work. Like, I'm probably yeah. gonna make, like, a whole other, like, uh, schema for that. Schema, whatever. Yeah, And, like, cause... have inventory items be their own, like, database entry. Yeah. Is coming with Mandrock V3. Um, obviously, we did a survey to see what people wanted the most, and it was an economy system. So, coming with that was going to be uh, like action commands, like fishing, uh, chopping, mining, stuff like that. And that requires that inventory schema um, or inventory overall. And then we wanted to we wanted to separate the profile and the inventory, didn't we? Or did we? Want, I I think I wanted to have them together, and you guys wanted to separate them, or something like that. Yeah, right now I want to separate them because of the way it, like shop items are implemented. Yeah, like, there's a entry for each shop item, and then for the inventory, you have the shop item ID that links to a shop, like the item in the shop. Yeah, and then you have the item ID for the inventory. So, like, for example, like, boosters. If you have, a like, a two times booster, that value will link to an item in your inventory. And then that item will link to a shop item, which has, like, all the data for it. It's very, very, like, ah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's all right. But I just need to find out a way, like, how I want to do the inventory. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, uh, especially with V3, uh, there's going to be donator type stuff because i know that people have no incentive to donate because there's not really any uh like donator perks within the discord itself it's more of a just a youtube thing so that that's going to come with like specific commands that you can run um as a donator or like uh, for instance we have a tool system that will be coming i think or was that because i know there's been a lot of creative differences is the the tools have to be repaired still or is that yeah that's yeah that's the plan Okay, you have so... the repair command, which like like repairs everything in your inventory. So I think the boosters, or well, boosters and donators, I think they get to repair their entire tool set like more than just generic users, or it could be um, generic users aren't allowed to repair their tools at all. They have to 
um like wait for a x amount of time for them to like repair themselves something like that yeah that can be done fairly easy yeah I, I can't remember like there's there's always different routes you can go with things and mandrock there's there's like shit tons of different routes we can go yeah i mean it's pretty like pretty easy to implement things i guess um i haven't made things too hard to like fits because a lot is like the administration stuff props to george but i use like the uh, mod log Mo oh, english mod log class which like yep. builds a mod log for everything mm -hmm. yeah like that that's that was made by george but i like had to like modify stuff because the language difference yeah but everything's fairly easy like to fits and implement your features and that that was the plan because we're going to open source mandrock when it releases um so that people can implement their own code if they want like if they want to see a feature they can like do a pull request or like they can open issues if there's issues with mandrock uh like stuff like that just, just like better like um uh, issue management and like problem management than just using the suggestions channel that gets ignored completely yeah yeah and it's like a filled with a bunch of clutter you have like tutorial stuff and you have bot stuff which was like uh uh like i'm pretty sure you didn't want any bot stuff because of v3 um i think we were gonna overall change the suggestion system and how it was implemented uh, i think that's still coming with v3 yeah yeah uh, um but now now taking a step back um and thinking about how like we have suggestions in the discord i think once suggestions v4 v3 comes about v3 um i think we'll end up just like dropping the suggestions and how we handle them in particular via mandrock and just use the suggestion spot yeah anthony's doing pretty good i have access to the source code because ah. i'm cool yeah i'm supposed to review it but i haven't it's not like it needs reviewing it's pretty good code yeah um because we were speaking about it a couple of days back because there's a podcast just coming out before this one with anthony we we're speaking about suggestions and like uh what it used to be and how it got to here um we're just talking about v2 and how like shit it is and how going from like discord.js like just the normal version to the forked version of it called light um, it's not really a fork it's it's more of just like an extension package like it just if the only thing it does is like modify it like class prototypes it's the only thing it does it's yeah. still very beneficial um and i was just speaking to him about how like that impacted his bot and like the positives that came out of it and he was talking about how like yeah. it was easy to implement just stuff like that um but coming with v3 like there's so many features that i'm excited for like it's like i i, I had a hand yeah 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 um I had a I had a bit of input on like some of the the things that were getting implemented and yeah I like the direction it's going so uh, I don't want to I don't want to put enough I don't want to put more stress on the Mandrock team to obviously try and implement suggestions how I originally wanted it um, I just want it to be like uh, functional for the time being because V three of suggestions isn't coming until I believe the end of the year so um, yeah I mean like ever, we'll probably eventually drop it like um suggestions from the mandrock um bot and use suggestions because of like all the implementation and certain commands that come with it yeah i mean the only real concern is like just a cario which is what we use for the framework yeah i'm pretty sure i told you that there's a lot of things that changed since v3 was or like originally planned because of uh... george like you had something like you can like uh emit the subcommand and there was a default usage, but that's yeah. not really. I don't think that's like. Uh, I can't English. That's not possible with Agario. Yeah, I I have always been against using like frameworks for bots because I feel like it adds like this massive layer of uh, code that doesn't necessarily get used. Like especially with how I would make Discord bots. Like, I wouldn't use the entire package, so I couldn't justify using the entire package. Um, like, especially when it came to, like, Classer and Acario and, and stuff like that. But, like, w would you say it was a good idea to use it for Mandrock? Because of, like, how, um, like, feature-rich it is? 
Well, the only like real reason I used it is because of like argument, like um, parsing, and like, it's just argument system. It's, it's fairly flexible. It has its issues, like everything else, but I mean, yeah, it was a good choice. It it it's helped a lot, and um, I mean, yeah, it's hope it hope hope hopefully um, it'll like sustain its um, like flexibility throughout its development. Yeah, um, like feature it's open source. Would you be open to the idea of Mandrop going Neo Chord come V four? Um, probably with like Enjo when it's finished. Because I think come come that time you you would be able to implement like everything we needed like shitloads quicker because you know the framework from oh, well the library from back to front. Yeah, and then I can modify stuff if I find issues. Yeah, and that's why that's why I create a lot of the stuff I use like Lava Client and like Obsidian. It's just because. I'm the owner, like, I'm the developer. I can just change stuff when needed. Unless, um, whereas I would have, like, submit an issue or PR. And then it doesn't get reviewed for, like, a couple of days. And yeah, stuff like, like that. and the site. Yeah. Um, anyways, I think that's a wrap. I think we've spoken about everything we wanted to speak about. Yeah. I mean, we did miss some stuff, but that was just because we are rambling, but that's what, about what, it. What did we miss? Um, um, uh, there's like a question in mid state that we miss, and then, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. What was, what was the original reason for creating mid mixtape? Um, I looked up mid state on top, 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 GG, and I was like, Midsape's a pretty good name for a music bot. Oh, I made a bot named Midsape. <laughs> you you can't lie. It's a pretty good name. Like, why why would no one else pick it? Yeah, I mean that's fair. It's like there's name like Groovy and like Octave. Like, come on, Octave. That's a bit like that's a fancy word. <laughs> that's like actual music. How do you spell that? <laughs> O C T A V. I was joking. I was oh, joking. <laughs> I mean, you're you're. I don't know. You're Australian. I don't know. Maybe wow. didn't know how to spell it. The source. Wow. So yeah. Spicy. Anyways, um, it's been a blast having you on. Um, uh, I think we covered a lot of good things, and I I think everyone now knows you a little bit better. What do you say? Yeah. Fair share of Connor slander and stuff. I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you could have a bit more Connor Slander in there. Not going to lie. I, I really could have. Yeah, you were very restrained. I do respect that. Thank you very much. I've gotten good at that. And you know that. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'm pretty good at making sure that people don't necessarily have to filter themselves around me. That's... Well, I do filter myself. Yeah, but everyone does that because, you know, just like human morals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you do it just because it's me. I think you do it for everyone. That's true. Ugh. Anyways, really true. Um, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching the uh, episode four of the podcast. This has been Genomorph and Condor the Great. And I'll probably have you on later on. Like I'll probably have you on a couple episodes because of Mandrock. And we'll speak a little bit more about Mandrock uh, with Jonas. And you guys can have your little yeah. beefy beef on a podcast, and we can record it. Make it really There's fun. a lot of beef. There's a lot of beef. A lot, of, a lot of steak. Um, and a lot of yeah. steak. Thank you guys so much for watching. See ya. That's when you say see ya too. Oh, I'm sorry. See ya. <laughs>